smart telescopes have taken the astronomy world by storm and honestly to an extent I didn't even expect. I always thought that they were a great way for people to dip their toes into astronomy and astrophotography without breaking the bank or needing a lot of preparation or background knowledge. But what I didn't expect is how people have actually started using these little telescopes not just as an easy way to get into the hobby but as a proper remote private observatory and yet this is exactly the direction the market is heading into all the signs are pointing that way so today i want to show you some of the novelties i've seen popping up in this space one of which is the latest update to the sea star firmware which is what actually prompted me to make this video today so let's take a closer look my name is lucy and you're watching the space koala what do you actually need to build a remote observatory? Well, at the very least, you need a telescope, a camera, a mount, and ideally motorized focus. Also, you'd want the ability to change filters automatically if you use filters. And all of that, the telescope, the mount, the focuser, the filter wheel, is already integrated in today's smart telescopes. But it's unfortunately not enough because you can't just leave your telescope sitting out in the middle of nowhere and expect it to work by itself as a remote observatory, you would also need a few other key things to make remote operation possible. You're gonna need power, for example, because of course nothing is gonna run on starlight alone. You need an internet connection so you can actually connect to it remotely. You do need a way to transfer the files from the telescope to your computer somehow. And perhaps most importantly, you're going to need some sort of shelter, a way to protect the instrument from the elements, most importantly, rain. So while a smart telescope already gives you a lot of the ingredients, it is still missing the infrastructure that will turn it into a true remote observatory. That means you'll need to find solutions for a few of these practical problems. Let's have a look at what the options are. Let's start with the most important one, shelter, because no matter how smart your smart telescope is, it is not going to be resistant to the rain. If you're lucky enough to have a backyard, the easiest option is simply to build a box or small housing for it, something you can uncover whenever you want to use it. It doesn't have to be complicated, even a weatherproof wooden box with a removable lid will do the trick. Now if you're a bit more technically inclined, you can take it a step further. You can motorize that lid or the entire shelter, so you can actually open it and close it remotely. That way you could, in theory, operate your telescope from anywhere without physically touching it. Now, not everyone has a backyard or a backyard under good skies, so the alternative is to leave your telescope somewhere else. And now this is where my surprise started a little bit because now there are dedicated hosting services and compact observatory systems designed exactly for this purpose. So there's a new way of pre-built mini micro observatories starting to appear on the market. One of them is called the Orb, which if I'm not mistaken is a startup in the UK. I will link their page below the video. I don't think their product is fully available yet, but the concept is, is really cool. A small self-contained dome or observatory with a very compact footprint that you can just place wherever you want. From what I've seen, it's also motorized, so you can actually open and close it automatically, which is a must if you're remote. Just recently at one of the European Astro Shows, they introduced another very similar concept. I believe it was called the Polaris. Um, which is a project that is aiming for the same exact idea, a small weatherproof automated observatory for smart telescopes meant to make long time remote setups possible. And then of course there are existing hosting providers who already offer ready to go solutions. For example, Bray Falls um, Starfront Observatories has a hosting package made specifically for the C-Star. It's actually the lowest cost plan they offer, and I think it's around 100 bucks per month to rent a pier for a sea star under those roofs. What they offer is essentially a plug and play remote setup. They provide the pier, the power, the internet access, and an automated shelter that will open up at night if it's clear. You just leave your telescope there and you can control it entirely remotely. So yes, there are already options for shelter, whether you want to build something yourself, use a hosting service or wait for one of those new purpose-built observatories that to hit the market. Now, once you've got the shelter figured out, the next two things you need are power 
and internet connectivity. These are going to depend entirely on where your telescope lives. If it is in your backyard, then it's easy. You probably have already both figured out. But if you're setting up somewhere more remote or if you're not using one of the hosting services, then you'll need to come up with your own solution. As for the power, that might mean running a long cable from the nearest house place you have power, setting up a battery station um, connected to solar panels or anything of the sort if you really want something self-sustaining. For the internet, um, the smart telescopes don't have Ethernet ports, so you're going to want a stable Wi-Fi connection and then the internet itself can come from anywhere. You can have a Starlink, you can have 5G, 4G, depending on where you are. Once you have all of those in place, the last missing piece of the puzzle is this. How do you actually connect the telescope remotely? This is where things can get a little more technical. Being able to connect to your smart telescope remotely isn't new. In fact, plenty of people are already doing it this way today, and I've tried it myself a few times just for fun. I don't really have a remote place. There are basically two main ways people are managing remote access right now. The first method, and this is what most people who host their telescopes in remote observatories prefer, to use a computer that can run the Seastar application. This could be a Mac Mini, since the Seastar iOS app runs natively on Mac OS, or also a Windows mini PC running an Android emulator like Bluestacks. There's also the option to use Seastar ALP, uh, which can also run on Indie, so you can just run it on a Raspberry Pi, giving you a compact, low power alternative, but you still need to figure out a way to connect to it. The principle is always the same. You connect your smart telescope directly to that computer, which then stays at the observatory, and then you configure remote access so that you can reach that computer from anywhere. It is a two-step process. You connect to the computer over the internet, and then the computer connects to that telescope. It works, and once it's configured, it's very reliable. The second method, and this is the one I have personally used, is to set up your own VPN or virtual private network. Now, I'm not exactly a networking expert and I managed to set it up without any issues. A VPN basically lets you connect to your home network from anywhere as if you were physically there. So let's say your telescope is sitting at home connected to your Wi-Fi and then you travel somewhere else, maybe another city, another country. You connect back to your home network through your VPN and suddenly your telescope appears on your device just like it would if you were sitting right next to it in the house. So I've used this method before to control my telescopes remotely. I've done it with the Sea Star, I've done it with the ASI Airs, and also with my Nina setup running on Windows. It is my favorite way to do it because it works super well. It's reliable as long as the router is up. My VPN server is my router, um, so I don't have to have a computer on at all times, and it gives me full control. I don't rely on any third-party servers. This actually is an important detail. Setting up your VPN is a lot easier if you have a router that supports it natively. So the one that you get for free from your internet service provider is likely not going to be that one. But if you get a more higher end router, for example, the nicer models from TP-Link, many of them include built-in VPN support. So this is what I use myself and it makes creating your own VPN almost effortless. Sure, you still need a little bit of setup um, but it is fairly straightforward. You just really have to make sure that your internet service provider provides you with a public IP. So um, this little bit of complexity is where the latest CSTAR firmware update comes in because they took all of that complexity and they took it all away and they made it basically effortless. So this is what is new. With the latest firmware update, they've introduced a feature called Telescope Network and this completely changes how remote control can work. The new feature essentially removes the need for remote uh, computers, for VPNs, anything like that, and it just does everything automatically for you in the background. Let's see how it works. Within the Seastar app, there is now a new option to enable the telescope network. You can simply tap join, follow a few quick steps, and the telescope gets registered to your Seastar account. So actually it is a must that you register with ZWO and then you log in on the app. From that point on, as long as that telescope is to connect it to Wi-Fi, you can control it from 
anywhere in the world. Just select it from the remote devices, um, join it, and you will be able to use it exactly as if you were standing next to it. What this does is it links your telescope directly to your account. So when you log into the app from another location, it automatically recognizes your device and connects through ZWO's servers. This is a huge deal for people who aren't comfortable setting up uh, complex networks or simply don't want to spend time fiddling with routers and IP addresses or if they can't get a public IP address. You just opt in once and that's it. So I've already tested this with my Seastar S30, uh, which right now is sitting quietly in my bedroom at home. And yes, if it was turned on, I could connect to it from here remotely without any issues. But for this video though, I held off on activating the feature on my S50 because I wanted to show you the process from scratch. So let's actually do it. Right here, I have the Seastar S50, which is connected to my local Wi-Fi network. I haven't enabled the new telescope network yet because I wanted to go through the process from the start. So this is what we'll do. I'll open the app, go to local devices and tap join to register the telescope to my account. The app gives me a short set of instructions. It's basically just confirming that you're on the same network and logged into your account. Once that's done, it syncs everything and marks the telescope as part of your telescope network. And now that it's registered from this point on, it should be accessible from anywhere as long as it stays powered on and connected to Wi-Fi. I will wait until it gets dark so I can actually polar align it. Once it's aligned and ready, I'll just walk away um, a little bit further, just far enough so that we are sure that I'm completely out of the range of both the Seastar's own Wi-Fi network as well as my home Wi-Fi. Then we'll see if I can still control it. If everything works as expected, I, I should be able to open the app, connect to the telescope, slew the target, start tracking and take exposures all without being anywhere near it. So since I will be doing it remotely it will prove that the connection isn't relying on my local wi-fi at all but on the new telescope network system that routes everything through my c-star account so that's the plan i'll wait for the sun to set and then we'll test it live all right so it is night time it is time to put the c-star to the test i'm going to connect to it and just polar line as usual Everything else has already been done, so essentially the process I'm following is the one that I made the tutorial on a few weeks ago, and it is just how I make sure that the polar alignment and then the tracking is as accurate as possible. Okay, so I've gotten it as close to zero as possible, which is good, and I will actually connect it to a power source before I leave, and I will just walk away from here to be outside of the range of the Wi-Fi, and then we'll start imaging remotely. Okay, so I walked away. I'm about like 300 meters from the telescope now. And as you can see, I cannot see the telescope from here. There are some other networks, but those are not mine. So at this point, we can go back to the Seastar app. I go into my telescope network. I see that the S50 is online, so I can click remote. I click that and in a few seconds, we're actually connected to the telescope. It says remote connection successful. Now we can go back to the home screen of the app. You know that you're connected remotely because on the top left, next to the equatorial mode icon, we can see the telescope network icon, which is now green. Let's go into deep sky mode. We can do like the heart nebula. Let's see what it looks like. My problem is that the central part, like the Malat 15 cluster in the center, is not really in a nice rotation. I cannot rotate the sensor and I don't want to do a mosaic right now. So I need something else that kind of makes sense as a composition. Maybe I can do this bottom part right here. So let's just make sure that we are using long exposure images. I'm just going to go and check the settings. It's a good thing I checked because it was actually set to short exposures. So we're going to set that to 60 because we know that the polar alignment is accurate. So why not take longer shots? At this point, uh, we can go back to the target and we can start imaging. Okay, I will start the image enhancement. Okay, we're already two minutes in. 
and we can see the image coming in we have no trailing whatsoever this is exactly what we wanted so from this point on the process is exactly as it would be if i was imaging locally i'm just gonna let it run until the morning of course i could have made a plan but i just wanted to do something um quickly right now and then reconnecting in the morning this is what it looks like i'm connected to it still remotely and this is the current status we have. We have almost seven hours of data. I'm just going to stop it. And I can then actually download the image. At this point, I have the option to download the stacked fits. So you can process that locally if you want. You can also, of course, download the raw images, but that will take a while. And once I process the image, this is the final picture that I got from this night, which is not bad considering that I did it remotely with a smart telescope with an almost full moon. If the telescope network is a success, I would be very surprised if we didn't see the same exact feature make its way over to the ASI Air at some point. The C-Star and the ASI Air are built on very similar software foundations. I wouldn't be surprised if it was already in there and it was just hidden for now. When they eventually expose it as an option, it'll make remote operation even more seamless across ZWO's ecosystem. To be clear, everything that I'm saying here is pure speculation. They're just my thoughts as a curious observer of where these things might be heading. Then let's address the name itself, the telescope network. This choice of words makes me wonder where things might be going. I can't help but think that the word network hints at something bigger, maybe a future where you could link multiple telescopes under the same account and use them towards the same project, or even collaborate with other people. Imagine running two sea stars side by side, both working on the same project, or connecting to a friend's telescope halfway across the world to capture data together. Of course, there are real world limitations to this, especially bandwidth. Since the C-Star does its stacking locally, doing a simultaneous live stack from multiple telescopes would require transmitting full resolution data in real time, which is probably not trivial, but the idea itself is fascinating and maybe, just maybe, that's where things could eventually lead. Um, again, I have no insider knowledge and these are just my own guesses. I can't shake the feeling that the telescope network is more than just a convenient name. It might be a glimpse of what is coming next. So that's it for this little demo and discussion i'm super curious to see how the community reacts to this new feature how many people end up using it and whether it becomes a standard part of remote astrophotography setups would this new feature enable you guys to set up a remote sea star rig where previously you may not have been able to do that because of the technical difficulty of the setup. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this experiment. I hope it gave you a good look at what is changing and what might be next for smart telescopes. And as always, I wish you clear skies.